continuing our our uh, winter school presentations, I have next to me, it's my colleague, uh, Dr. Roxana Giza. She is a specialist in, in uh, Holocaust studies and gender balance. She is also teaching in our university English business. So this is, uh, I will uh, skip the, the floor to Roxana and we will have practically the last lecture of our, of our winter school. Hello, everybody. Thank you for um, attending this lecture. I know that you are at the end of a, a very full week, so uh, um, I'm going to try to make it as uh, interactive as possible so that uh, I don't uh, um, put uh, more pressure on you. Um, so, is every, first of all, is everything okay with the, can you hear me? Can you see me? Is everything okay with the connection? Yeah. Okay. I will take that as a yes. Um, now, first of all, before we actually, uh, before we actually, um, um, or before I actually start my presentation, uh, I want us to start with the Kahoot. I don't know if you are familiar with Kahoot. That's an online quiz. So um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna send you the link for the Kahoot in the chat. Right, 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 right. So first of all, let's see how much you know about um, um, gender and uh, science and engineering. So I guess if I'm gonna just give me one second. Okay. Hey, please, please. I mean, you know, uh, I would be heartbroken not to have my Kahoot. Okay, good. So we have this, right? Yeah, and you start the game. For example, I don't know which one of those. I think classic. But okay, but this yeah. is player versus player. Maybe the team mode or no? I think the, I'm not sure at this point. Okay. We can try both. And then this pin okay. is loading here. You have yeah. to tell us. And then knowing this pin, we can join the game. So you have the pin now on the screen. Yeah. Can you see if it's working now? I'm trying to... Thank you. It's working, right? Yay. Funcionaza? Aha. Cupino. Eu am fost așa de entuziasmată de că hutul meu trebuie să-l face să meargă. So yes, I was able to join. Okay, okay, good, good, perfect. Maybe can you can you tell the others where they have to put the pin, like your colleagues that are maybe not familiar with the Kahoot? I I simply googled Kahoot Play, and I received the first link uh, in Google to with Kahoot to enter the pin. Nice. I can um, send the link in the chat. Sure, please. Thank you. I'm really grateful my kahoot is working so basically each yeah. you you have great you have like 20 seconds for each question okay so you need to be fast and then i would like to know how many of the answers you got right Mm -hmm. 
Acum trebuie să dau start, nu? Să mai intre. Ok. Ok, ok. Da, da, da. Ok. O întrebare, mă scuzați. Trebuie pus yeah. game pin-ul? Acela... Trebuie pus game pin-ul? Acela... Da, da, da. Ah. Trebuie pus game pin, da. Yeah. Ok. Ok. Thank you. You're welcome. Ok, I guess we can start. Yes. Nu știu că să nu faci pe Zoom atunci. Ok, so I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the game because most of you, I guess, uh, um, are already um, connected. Good, so in thing got the answer right. Yeah, there's something wrong because we can't see the question. So you have okay. to split screen. You have okay. on half of the screen your question, and then on the other half of the of the screen. So your on answers. your on your screens, you cannot see the question. Yes. Yes. No. We only see square, triangle, circle. Yes. So the, yes. Yes. It's okay because we have to see the questions and the possible answers on the screen you are sharing on Zoom. And then we go to Google Chrome or whatever browser we use for Kahoot and only choose the uh, the color. So it's okay. This is what I was saying that you have to split screen. To like you mean to share the screen? No, no. We have to split screen. So we have oh, okay. to have on half of the screen the question and on the half of the screen the answers. It's two different pages, so we have the Zoom meeting on half the screen and <laughs> okay, yeah. the browser on the other half. Is it too difficult? No, but I didn't figure out the first question that I have to do this. Oh, you missed the first question. It's okay. No problem. <laughs> You're going to get the other ones.
Okay, one more. So Maria is on the third position. Congratulations, Maria Sergio, second position. And the winner of this kahoot is B. <laughs> Congratulations to everybody. I, uh, I hope that you also learned some, uh, some new things. Um, now let's, uh, let's move on to, this was, uh, this was just the warm up. Uh, okay, let me close this. Share yeah, uh, just a second. Stop, stop sharing. sharing, yeah, okay. Okay, good. <laughs> a very important thing, not to, not to experiment on students. <laughs> Why, was it that bad? How are we going to experiment if not on students? Who are we going to, we teachers, who are, gonna ex who are we going to experiment on, right? Okay. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Now. Just to put this on the screen. It's okay now. Everything is okay now. Okay. So, um, as uh, as you could probably notice from uh, from the kahoot that we started with, what uh, uh, the women that were uh, were there in the questions, what they have in common is the fact that uh, they are all remarkable in um, in many ways, and uh, at the same time, uh, quite neglected. I would say um, their groundbreaking work. Will, is not uh, you know very familiar to to most people i would say uh and to a certain extent the situation is not very different for women in science and engineering nowadays so the aim of this uh, interactive lecture because it's gonna be uh, or it's meant to be um interactive especially the second part of it 
is to explore gender gaps leading to a career in science and engineering from the decision to enroll in a degree to the scientific fields that both genders pursue and the sectors in which they work. Moreover, the lecture sets out to outline the combination of factors which leads to the emergence of this gender imbalance at each stage of a scientific career. The graduate level environment, performance evaluation criteria, the lack of recognition, lack of support for leadership skills development and conscious or unconscious gender bias. So the lecture is going to focus on both a national as well as a transnational and transcultural perspective of gender imbalance in science and engineering. And uh, I would really, I would really encourage you and I would really appreciate um, if again, um, in the second part um, of um, our lecture, you would, um, you're gonna bring your own input from your own uh, countries, from your own cultures um, on the topic based on both the personal and um, cultural experience. So that's something that I would really like us to do in the second part of the lecture and to, you know, to share. I mean, this is how I think we can really enrich um, um, our experience by, by sharing the different cultural perspectives. Uh, as we know, there are regions that encounter even more barriers as a result of cultural norms that discourage women from taking traditionally male roles, thus generating an even greater gender imbalance. Um, and uh, at the end of um, at the end of our session, I would also like us to discuss um, different policies for gender equality that have already been created and their efficacy. Uh, as well as uh, other possible um, solutions uh, that could be implemented again. And I would like to um, have your input on this. So regardless of where they live, women have a lot of, uh, in common. For example, they are expected to get married to men, have children. They are more likely to experience sexual and domestic violence than are men. Um, women's role as reproducers, that is their ability to bear and nurse children is a particularly important aspect that women share regardless of culture. Yeah. Bearing and caring uh, for children is a source of status and value for women in different cultures. And uh, as it's, um, it's, it's considered to be one of the very few areas where women actually excel over men. Um, women are also responsible for their children in ways that men are not, and this affects their daily lives dramatically, regardless of, um, of where they live. One important thing that women have in common is that most of them live in patriarchal societies, and in gender studies, patriarchal societies are defined as those with economic, political, and legal structures that perpetuate gender inequality. Um, the fact that men generally control economies and political and legal systems has great implications for women worldwide. More specifically, it often means that women do not have the resources to live independently, um, to leave situations of abuse, to seek justice. Uh, it means that many countries do not have laws protecting women from gendered acts of violence, and those countries which uh, such laws often fail to enforce them. Um, it means that in many places, violence against women and the perception of women as men's property is common cultural practice and that women are conditioned to accept this. Um, the form and specifics of these commonalities differ based on culture, of course, but women undoubtedly share uh, certain experiences due to their gender. These similarities form the basis of what's called transnational feminism that cuts across cultures and unites women's struggles from many parts of the world. Uh, for instance, almost everywhere women work extremely hard in both paid and unpaid labor, experience sexual harassment, they get married, structure their lives according to their children's needs, worry about and plan pregnancies and are um, at high risk for gender violence. Um, while, as uh, I was pointing uh, out before, the majority of women worldwide live in uh, patriarchal societies, there is a, a great cross-cultural variation in the gender challenges women face and how they face them. Um, and I'm just going to pick some examples from different countries. For instance, activists in the United States work on increasing the number of women in Congress by giving money to women's campaigns and lobby Congress to make emergency contraception available without prescription. In Israel, um, women um, activists... Sorry, can add, uh, yeah? we can see only the first slide. Yeah, it's... Uh, the, you, just a second. This is what you are supposed to see. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> You're only supposed to see the first slide. <laughs> um, so, um, in, um, where was I? In Israel, um, 
um, women activists seek an end to orthodox Jewish laws that allow only husbands to seek divorce. In Japan, uh, they work to increase the number of shelters and community supports for battered women. In India, they fight for the enforcement of laws forbidding dowries where the bride's family must pay uh, the groom's family. Um, in Pakistan, they uh, aim to protect women from the so-called honor killings where male relatives murder women to protect the family honor for such offenses as being raped, for example. Um, in Afghanistan, they seek the prosecution of gunmen who have forced the closing of several girls' schools and have burned some down. In countries such as the Dominican Republic, Brazil, Cambodia, Costa Rica, Burma, Thailand, and Cuba, they work to prevent uh, the trafficking of young girls and women into sexual slavery. Uh, while women's challenges and their responses to them vary according um, to region, society, and time period, um, one, uh, um, one uh, current um, um, issue that uh, women share is uh, um, um, the gender imbalance in, uh, in science and technology. The statistics of education So um, the statistics of education show that women outnumber men in college enrollment. However, women un are underrepresented in science and engineering field, both in terms of the number of bachelor degrees they earn um, and, uh, and their presence. Um, one reason is the fact that um, there is a significant number of women who um, um, enroll in university in, um, in um, science and engineering field and then they drop out. Um, and throughout the last half of the 20th century, activists fought to change that situation. So gender segregation in the vocational orientation of adolescents has been well documented for decades. Yeah. The persistence of gender paths in career choices has recently been reflected in the current Global Gender Gap Report of the World Economic Forum, which states that on average, men are underrepresented in the fields of education, health and welfare, whereas women are underrepresented in the STEM, uh, STEM, which is an abbreviation, as you already know, from science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Um, so this is, uh, this is from the Global uh, Gender Gap Report uh, from 2017. So quite recent uh, data. The persistence of horizontal gender segregation in educational and occupational fields contributes decisively to the spread of gender stereotypic beliefs about the natural fit of women in careers in more expressive and human-centered fields and men in technical and math-intensive fields. Um, in 2015, a survey was conducted of about uh, like a massive survey, 350,000 uh, participants in 66 countries, which analyze how women's enrollment in science courses relates to the gender science stereotype. This study concluded that explicit and implicit national gender science stereotypes were weaker in countries with a higher female enrollment in uh, tertiary science education. And the study also demonstrated that stereotypes about uh, science were strongly gendered, even in countries with high overall gender equality. The low proportion of women in uh, STEM leads to the spread of a gender stereotypical image of math and science as a male domain and beliefs about male supremacy in technical and math intensive fields. In turn, such beliefs affect young uh, people's career choices, leading to a, mu a mutual reinforcement of gender stereotypes and gender gaps in career uh, related interests and choices. So basically every starts, uh, everything starts from, from very early um, from a very, uh, very early age from school. The gender stereotype of math and science has been analyzed via a variety of quantitative and qualitative methods. Among those, um, and you might be familiar with them, among those are the draw a scientist test, the implicit association test, explicit stereotype assessment using attitude questionnaire, semantic differential assessments and individual or group interviews. So studies that applied the draw a scientist test uh, method reported that students from kindergarten, so they actually, they, they uh, started doing this, uh, this test with um, kind uh, kindergarten uh, um, students. So very, very young kids. So students from kindergarten to high school perceive a scientist as a male person. 
the children's drawings contain very few portrayals of female scientists, and these few drawings more, were mostly drawn by female students anyway. Uh, for example, in a study surveying students uh, in um, um, grades from 2 to 12, only 135 pictures out of 1,600 pictures displayed female scientists, and only 6 out of 135 pictures of a female scientist were drawn by male students. Um, okay, so 6 out of 135 were drawn by uh, male students and then the rest female students. Um, research on gender uh, science stereotypes has illustrated differences between female and male youth with respect to the endorsement of stereotypic beliefs about STEM. A study among primary school uh, students illustrated that stereotypical beliefs that STEM school subjects are more suitable for uh, boys than for girls were more strongly endorsed by boys than by girls, especially boys who are highly interested and girls who are relatively uninterested in STEM-related school subjects were more likely to believe that STEM school subjects constitute a male domain. Finally, a study among first-year university students indicates that negative stereotypes of women's engineering and mathematical ability were more strongly endorsed among male students, whereas female students were more likely to report higher perception of their engineering um, abilities. Now, um, there are... Um, there are several um, there are several theories that try to account for this um, gender imbalance, and I'm just going to you know briefly uh, mention them. Now, one of them is the theory of discrimination and denial of access. Um, engineering, like you know, historically speaking, engineering was perceived as a masculine career, and consequently, women were denied access. Studies of elementary, middle, and high school science reveal a persistent pattern in which teachers paid more attention to boys' scientific interests and provide them with more science experiments. Girls, on the other hand, develop more negative um, attitudes towards science. And of course, a strong reason is the fact that they are, you know, in some or many situations, they are being neglected or um, um, boys are showing, are being showed the um, preference. Until the Second World War and beyond, many leading engineering schools in the United States, for example, Georgia Institute of Technology, California Institute of Technology, re remained close to women. The few women uh, admitted to Massachusetts Institute of Technology, you know, the famous MIT, struggled against the hostile intellectual and social environment. Women studying engineering were perceived as odd exceptions, outcasts, and defying normal gender norms. Uh, the reason for the gender exclusion, again, historically speaking, the reason for the gender exclusion was found in the origins of the profession. Throughout the 19th century, it was rare for practitioners to have earned a formal engineering degree. They acquired they, their credential through on-the-job experience, such as in the railroad yard or machine shop. Um, and of course, the such work, uh, such work environments excluded women. Um, in addition, engineering chores involve hard, sometimes dangerous uh, work, um, and they were perceived as being inappropriate for women. Other forces that reinforced the masculinity of the profession were um, that makers of the model uh, of model trains and other technological toys marketed them only to boys as a way to make them into future engineers. Uh, girls who expressed technical interests were often steered instead into the science of home um, um, economics. The issue of venturing into strange space came to a head when with the outbreak of the Second World War, the United States suddenly faced a, a manpower crisis and men were called up to service and industry needed people with technical expertise at drawing boards and engineering shops to produce planes and tanks for the war. So uh, this is when companies started to um, uh, seek to hire female engineers, but they could not find enough female engineer, um, engineers. Companies like General Electric hired women with knowledge of math and science, gave them emergency crash courses and turned them into wartime engineers aides. Um, Life magazine published a special feature titled The Engineeresses, okay, using a derogatory somehow term, the engineeresses were a curiosity, but acceptable as a temporary war measure. This was a special feature in Life magazine. So only acceptable as a temporary war measure. 
As the Second World War drew to a close, returning male veterans flooded American engineering programs and the wartime emergency rationale for encouraging women to develop their technical talents vanished. Also, conservative gender modes of the post-war decades brought a prevailing expectation that the goal of marrying and raising children should take precedence over women's career ambitions. Young girls who did express technical interests were often deliberately discouraged by negative rem remarks from family and even from teachers. Okay, a second theory is the theory of self-concept. Um, um, Ross and Nisbet argue that individuals see situations through the lens of their own self-views and that individual differences um, exist in the way situations impact on people. So constructivists pose it that humans actively cre create and construe our personal realities. Female college students, even those who select math intensive majors, have difficulty associating math with the self if, the, if they implicitly stereotype math, mathematics as being masculine. Despite their current self-perception as positively inclined towards mathematics and science, women in one study could not or would not construct possible cells in the realm of engineering and the physical sciences, perhaps because such possible cells were at odds with their notions about femininity or be because they had no female role models in these areas to help them articulate um, a possible self. Another theory that um, has been put forward is the... Um, as to why fewer women can be found in science, is that women make decisions um, differently from men. Um, these decisions are um, made with the mindset of having multiple life roles, self-identity and ways of interacting with people, objects and experiences in the world. Um, so women make career plans based on anticipated personal and professional roles. And there are like several studies carried out um, um, related to this. Um, now, uh, um, studies found out that highly successful women describe themselves um, in terms of relationships more than in terms of their, um, their careers. Their identity will rest with their relationships uh, as mothers, wives, lovers, and children, and not in academic or professional success. Similarly, Another study found that academically outstanding women tend to judge success in terms of relationships and tend to make decisions that emphasize balance between work and family. Uh, and younger girls and adolescents, they also tend to describe their world uh, um, predominantly in terms of relationships. Um, so um, one study concluded that women may choose less technical occupations because of their popularity, which makes cho um, choice is less challenging than it is for other occupations. Um, for, for some female students, the technical nature of engineering does not suggest life skills of creative thinking and communication. So again, all these, uh, um, all these uh, theories are uh, um, based on studies that have been conducted. Now, um, moving on to the workforce, um, there are, of course, there are other theories, but I, I think that these uh, might be the most um, prominent ones. Of course, that education is not the only area that marginalizes women in science and engineering. Workplace discrimination is a, a real barrier to women scientists. Um, and again, as you could uh, see from, uh, from, the, from the quiz, um, so far only a number of uh, 20 women, uh, for example, got the Nobel Prize. Um, um, for science, um, and um, um, so in industry, limited access is the first hurdle faced by women seeking jobs in science and engineering. While progress has been made in this area in recent years, common recruitment and hiring practices which use traditional networks of often overlook the available pool of women, according to the to um, a report of Committee of Women in Science and Engineering. Um, and once on the job, uh, it frequently happens, I would say, or often happens that the environment um, can be toxic to women. Um, many uh, female employees find paternalism, sexual harassment, allegations of reverse discrimination, different standards for judging the work of men and women, lower salary relative to their male peers, inequitable job assignments, and other aspects of um, um, culture that uh, can be hostile to women. 
women have limited opportunities for advancement, particularly for moving into management positions. Um, the number of women who have achieved the top levels in corporation is much lower than, than would be expected. And again, considering the fact that uh, more women um, get um, uh, degrees um, than, than men. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to uh, talk a bit about the situation in, uh, in Romania, and then um, I would kindly invite you to um, um, give your input on the situation in your own countries, in your own cultures. Um, okay, so um, in Romania, the evolution of social life was really challenging. The first uh, is the forced industrialization specific to the communist period did not allow a real change of the traditionalist um, relations between the sexes, while the emancipation of the women was generally accurated with her inclusion in the labor market, on the labor market, sorry. Um, according uh, to the European Gender Equality Index from 2019, Romania ranks uh, on a, uh, the 25th position in the European Union showing that Romania is progressing towards gender equality, but at a slower pace than other uh, um, European member, <laughs> European, sorry, European Union member states. Um, also, the Global Gender Gap Report from 2020, so this is very recent data, ranks Romania on a um, 50, um, fifth position in the world, showing very slow improvements. The report of the Global Economic Forum of 2000 16 indicates even a slowdown in the rate of progress of gender equality, being especially highlighted the increase of the gaps in the fields of science and technology. On the other hand, the World, uh, the World Bank's Romania Gender Assessment Report from 2018 indicates a series of advances related to the presence of women in scientific fields, considered male-dominated, and the creation of a legislative and institutional framework for addressing gender issues. In terms of the difference between the number of women and men that complete a, a major in a science and engineering field, Romania is mentioned as a country with a smaller gender gap difference, despite the fact that the men population is three times larger. However, the number of Romanian women who complete their doctoral study is, uh, is quite low. 26.3% um, of the total number of employees in science and um, engineering fields in Romania are women, compared to the European average of 16.7%. So we are doing pretty well here. We are above the European average, according to the Global uh, Gender Gap Report. Um, the Gender Barometer Romania 2018 points out a contradiction between the promoters of gender equality and the target population of these efforts. While 47.3% of women agree that, quote, women often do not get jobs because they are women, unquote, yet 50.3% of the respondents agree that, quote, gender discrimination is no longer a problem in Romania, unquote. Um, the rate of uh, females that follow a form of higher education um, in Romania, um, as uh, we saw that it's the case with other countries, is above that of males. In 2016, they reached a 53.9 percentage compared to the 46.3 percentage of higher educated males. But then there is uh, what, um, um, what um, researchers call the, the leaking pipeline as in um, more women than, um, than men um, enrolling in um, um, university um, courses related to science and engineering. But then um, after they already entered the world of education, they, uh, they leave it or quite, quite, a, yeah, quite, a, quite a big percentage, right? Um, they, they, um, they leave um, at different stages. Um, yeah, there are, uh, and we experience, yeah, for sure in, in our university, yeah. um, to give, uh, to give our example. And, uh, um, I teach, um, students in different, um, um, science and engineering faculties and yeah, the, the number of women is not only very low, but 
they also tend to drop out some of them after or most of them i would say maybe after the first year so um and then uh so or if they if they uh, uh, complete their studies um some or or quite a considerable percentage they um, um, um change their career options uh, um, at some at some point so this is what the um, uh, researchers call the leaking pipeline when it comes to um, to gender imbalances in science and engineering um, now um, what you have here on the screen is um, 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 a picture from a brochure of a project that I am um, 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 personally participated in. It was a Grudnik project, a partnership um, among uh, Austria, Czech Republic, Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia. And um, uh, the project was, uh, it's, a, it's an older project from 2013, is women education a risk at risk. Um, and um, the, um, the conclusions of, um, of our study are, are similar to the ones that I, I just reported that, um, um, yeah, while um, uh, the study is not, it's, uh, it's focused on women in general, it's not focused on um, uh, particularly on women in science and engineering, um, but yeah, pretty similar that um, while um, uh, women get, um, or more women than men get uh, get college degrees, um, then they end up um, in lower paid jobs. So same jobs, but lower paid. Um, they they decide to because of um, different types of pressures to um, switch careers at some point or to to give up on their jobs. Um, so the the situation is is pretty similar. Okay, now. Um, I wanted to show you. Um, I wanted to show you a video, and I'm just gonna ask you to try to guess what was the purpose of the video. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. Um, Okay, so just one second. Okay, so um, was anyone familiar with this video before? Any any guess why this video was created? What's the purpose of the video? Any idea? Yeah, I think they can hear me. 
So, any idea why the video was designed? Okay, so this was a European Commission campaign. This was a, a European Commission campaign designed to convince high school girls to pursue careers in science. Okay, so it was a campaign made by the European Commission. And um, of course that it got so much criticism, like it became viral, okay? Uh, and it, it, the video is called, it's a girl thing. So it got so much criticism that first of all, they had to make a public statement because people, they just thought that they were trying to, to make fun so that it was not a serious video. And then they had to make a public statement that, uh, no, we, we were trying to make it serious. <laughs> it just didn't work out. So, uh, so this is the European commission, again, European commission trying to convince high school girls to pursue careers in, um, um, in, uh, in science. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, this video has become a, a topic for uh, analysis for students in advertising and communication all over Europe. Um, so it, uh, as I was saying, it went viral for all the wrong reasons. So what do you find wrong with this? Uh, do you find anything wrong with it? Why would it, why would it send the wrong message? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this is this a video that you would use to um, encourage um, high school girls to pursue careers in science? Uh, I think there's a lot of stereotypes inside it. Exactly. First of all, for example, exactly. That's, you know, the, the main point, a lot of stereotypes. And yeah, the worst kinds, I would say. So can you be more specific? Uh, like uh, the makeup things, the high right. heels, okay. uh, the male researcher. Um, uh huh. Looking at them, uh, maybe I can switch up my video. Uh huh. Um. Yeah, all of those things. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So it's so yeah. So it's full of stereotypes that uh doesn't uh I don't know I don't know how to explain, but it's not what girls. Exactly. And it's just, yeah, and it's just like re reinforcing the, you know, the um, long standing stereotypes, so to speak. Exactly. So uh, you have like, yeah, on the on the one hand, you have the um, the guy, like the real scientist, the serious one, right? And then on the other hand, you have all these, uh, you know, uh, pinkish girls. High heels and short skirts and... <laughs> everything uh, connected to young girls, but not uh, uh, to scientists, because uh, it was another image, I said. Exactly, and like implying this idea that, okay, like if you want to, you know, be a girl scientist, you have to be smart, but also very feminine and very, very girly, right? As opposed to the yeah male scientist who's just, you know, the typical image of, so yeah, the way they are, they, the way they are, uh, um, I don't know, mirrored there uh, in the video is, is somehow very, very disturbing. Um, so yeah, the, the male in his lab coat and then the girls with uh, their uh, um, stilettos and their uh, makeup and giggling and uh, uh, you know, all the, all the silly things somehow connected, all the silly st stereotypes. Um, uh, and the, sorry, and the sunglasses turning in lab glasses. <laughs> yeah. Why should we wear sunglasses inside and the male not? So. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then, uh, um, and then, yeah, then you have, uh, 
it's like when they show interest in science, it's the science of makeup, right? According to this uh, to this video, not uh, not something else. Um, so, yeah, maybe it would be a good uh, maybe it could would be a good commercial for uh, cosmetic products or or something like that. But for sure, not uh, not a good video for for attracting uh, for attracting. Um, um, for attracting uh, um, uh, women to to the science field, um, so I guess I guess what they were trying to do, probably possibly, I don't know um, um, the person, the people, because there was a team designing this video, um, was the fact that you can be both very trendy and at the same time interested in science, you know, which that being very trendy is something that high school girls are very concerned with, so. Um, probably that's where they were trying to get at, but they did it in a very, a very wrong way. Uh, I guess, you know, they just wanted to counteract that stereotype of the science geeks, right, or something like that. So, um, but again, it, it's, um, um, and there were also many articles written about the, the failure of this, uh, the failure of this campaign and how, how uh, um, it just somehow did more damage than, um, than good. Um, okay, good. Now I would uh, I would kindly ask you to um, um, bring your own input. Okay, so again, both uh, both personal and cultural. Okay, as you come from different countries, different cultures. Um, so your uh, your own input on um, um, women and uh, or gender imbalance in uh, in science and technology. And again, I would really appreciate it if you could also share from your, maybe your personal experience, maybe, you know, maybe you had episodes where you felt, you felt discriminated, you felt like giving up, you felt, um, so I would um, appreciate it. But also if you can share with us from, you know, um, like um, cultural, uh, transnational perspective, So maybe maybe I can I can say a few words. Uh, we we apply for a cost program few few months ago, and uh, the people who wrote the the application uh, told us for the consortium that the manager of the project should be a young girl uh, with good CV and from e of Europe. So this is a change in the in the European Union project. This, this was a cost project. And finally, they didn't find in the east of Europe, they found a, a lady in uh, Ghent University in Belgium with a very good CV, quite young. And uh, so she is the manager of a project with more than 20 partners from industry, from different universities. We, we don't know about the the outline of the of the application because it's under review okay. but uh, so it looks like it, it looks like in uh, policy of the european union probably this video was <laughs> not good at all but uh, in the policy of of, uh, of european union they want to change they want to promote to, to promote women's now yeah, yeah but so this was an experience just a few months ago so but that's also like that's going to lead to reverse discrimination because yeah this is a kind of reverse you know, it's, yeah, yeah it's like you know yeah i mean it's but about, this happens in united states from long yeah, time exactly so. exactly this thing with the reverse discrimination yeah. sure and you know yeah. it, it's been happening in the united states for a long time so it also you know leads to inequality yeah, yeah so it's yeah. a it's another form of inequality but yeah, good news for yeah. good news for our <laughs> female. Uh, um. Good news, but I don't know uh, if we need this because uh, we recognize that uh, we have uh, problems in uh, um, this uh, direction. And uh, in Romania, I never felt that uh, there are any problems in uh, having and uh, participating as a woman in uh, projects or uh, doing research. So I don't, I don't know if they are uh, 
um, any uh, I don't know uh, any parts of Romania uh, where uh, there is a problem in our part here and uh, in the western part and uh, also in all my cooperations with other universities from Germany and from France I never uh, have seen um, problems or, or heard about uh, problems uh, regarding participating of uh, women or uh, recognition of uh, their work I don't know and I think uh, um, if we do such uh, quotes uh, then uh, we recognize recognize that uh, women have uh, to be special promoted to to mm -hmm. uh, get uh, such a position i'm uh, i'm also not a fan of uh, it's another domain but of uh, women organization in political parties because if we have separate organization uh, then we recognize that uh, we are not uh, the same so i i need to make a comment professor frunze verde was director of a university in romania and uh, I think most of the employees were men, no? Yes, yes. At the beginning, and then I had uh, some uh, uh, women uh, willing to participate in uh, uh, this uh, uh, project, but uh, at the beginning, uh, mostly men. But I never felt uh, that there were problems in communication or uh, recognition, never. Okay, so your experience was overall positive. Yes, I think so. uh, women don't right. have the courage to, to make the uh, step in front of the others to, to get to this position of managing positions, top at the top management, because uh, at uh, department uh, level, there are a lot of women uh, leading departments in universities, uh, but um, uh, level of deans and uh, then uh, uh, rectors, um, there are, are not so many. Many. So I think it's a problem uh, um, first of uh, having the courage to, to take, make to take a power. step in front <laughs> and to candidate and then uh, about recognition. I Eight years uh, I was rector uh, before I was uh, vice rector for international relation. I never felt that there are any gender problems. It's like, you know, nobody's going to give you the power. You have to take it, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, and uh, you have to, to win it. I don't know how to say, not uh, that uh, somebody says in 20% uh, of Romanian universities, rector has to, the rector has to be uh, <laughs> um, women. It's um, a woman. It's, uh, not, uh, it's not equality. I, I think uh, it's uh, not yeah. okay to have a quote because we yeah, recognize also. that women are not able to do it by themselves to, to get these positions. Yeah, also I don't It's a it's personal uh, <laughs> uh, opinion, but uh, not uh, scientific. I don't know uh, if, uh, uh, I've, if we tried some years ago uh, to study, um, we had a um, paper, uh, women on, on the top management, uh, a view from the top, uh, women in the top management of uh, uh, Romanian universities. And I have seen then uh, at that time that there are not so many uh, scientific studies regarding uh, uh, these uh, aspects. Uh, it's not, uh, I don't know, in the last years, but uh, this was, uh, I think, 10 years ago. Um, it was not a subject for, uh, for research and for scientific uh, publications in Romania. There, I don't know. There have been, yes, yeah, some recent, there have been some recent studies when, you know, that I, I checked when I was preparing the lecture. So there have been some recent studies on that. I also, I also don't agree with um, reverse discrimination. I agree with, uh, or I, you know, promote equality so I mean everybody should have fair chance equal chances okay so it's not uh, um, um, this is how things should be like yeah like both for the position of a project manager they you know <laughs> they should not restrict it to the young uh, East European uh, <laughs> they, they made it very specific that why, that's why they didn't find anybody for, <laughs> for it right Okay, anyone else, if, uh, again, maybe from your personal experience, the difficulties, uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Professor Shunza Verde. Um, so from your, your personal experience, the difficulties that you've encountered, um, uh, maybe when you were trying or are trying to make your way um, in, the, in the field. 
prejudices that you might have encountered any anything um, that that might be worth um, sharing or again if you can talk from a more you know bro from a broader perspective from a you know things that happen in your countries in your cultures I can say something. Please. Um, I've, I've studied in Italy, in uh, Padova. And uh, I think we were in, uh, and at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. Um, I was uh, one of the, uh, let me think, 2% of <laughs> girls uh, attending my course. And I didn't felt any discrimination by professors or um, from the university, but uh, with my mates, sometimes I felt like I had to uh, show more than what they were doing. So maybe in team groups, in um, teamworks or mm -hmm. something like this. Uh, and also you are always expected to know what uh, normally boys knows from mm -hmm. the childhood, let's say. So, and I was keep on repeating. I used to play with dolls, not with cars. <laughs> so <laughs> my interests are, I'm doing mechanical engineering, but you are not, uh, supposed to study only cars or engines. You can also study material characterization, fracture mechanics, and so um, the, um, I, I felt this type of pressure mm -hmm. from mates, but uh, and also from stereotypes from people who um, don't tend. Uh, I. From people outside university, mm -hmm. so where uh, when I was knowing someone, oh, strange thing, are you studying mechanical engineering? Is a boys thing. So um, <laughs> why did you choose that? And so and and to a boy, n no one would ask why you choose. Uh, did you choose uh, mechanical engineering? Exactly. So, mm -hmm. This type that. I, th I think that the important thing is not to, as you said before, uh, not to do reverse uh, equality. How did you, yeah, you, I think you define it like this, but um, the important thing is to uh, make girls at high school, at, uh, at the school before university, uh, make them know about this type of faculties about the scientific uh, subject and let them appreciate it. And because I can, I can understand that uh, sometimes it's not uh, uh, the first thing that a girl wants to do in uh, her future, uh, but sometimes it, it is also because she doesn't know. So uh, I think encourages is a good idea but not uh, uh, reserving places for girls. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. because as you said, it's not equality. This is not equality. Yeah, it's going to yeah, create different types, a different type of inequality. Yeah. Um, so the, the situation here, I mean, you know, from my personal experience with um, um, also with high school students and students, first year students, I teach first year students. Um, so like, girls here um, up until they finish high school many of them are interested in maths in uh, science in uh, basically here in Romania and it's probably the same in, in other places like you cannot choose like everybody has to do I don't know 12 years of maths uh, eight years of physics uh, it's not like you know in the United States where you can get away with one year of physics one year of chemistry something like that uh, so everybody has to do chemistry from the seventh grade, uh, I don't know, physics from the sixth grade until you finish high school. 
uh, and yeah, many, many girls are, uh, and you know, there are many national competitions where girls get very good results. So they are um, obviously interested, encouraged, but then it feels like when they come to university, like there's just a, a gap somehow, I don't know, because then few girls enroll in. I think the girls, in, girls choose uh, several degrees like management, in production yeah. and transport. I told you we have a faculty. So the majority of the students there are girls. Yeah, I teach there like, that's the only, actually that's the only faculty. And your it. faculty probably, communication yeah, but and that's languages. Because, but that's not engineering. It's not but engineering. Yeah, but yeah. In, yeah. And chemistry, also chemistry. Okay, I think. okay yeah. So. So yeah, th those would be, yeah, like uh, management in production and transportation and chemistry would be like the only, the only faculty like science and technology based yes. faculties yes. in Polytechnic, where the, where the majority uh, are girls. The majority are girls, mm -hmm. yes. yes. But then in like, our university, if you look on a university like uh, West University, which is more uh, uh, comprehensive university and with this law and the business, probably there the, the proportion of, of uh, girls is higher, higher than, than in our than university. Than. In, Polytechnica, yes. So maybe the, the name Polytechnica. <laughs> 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 you know. uh, yeah, so there's like, yeah, there's a gap. Uh, it's like, just as you were saying, uh, in I teach mechanical engineering students, for example, and I don't know, like, maybe I have two girls in one group or something yes, like yes. that, you know, in a group of 30 something boys. Uh, in mechanical uh, engineering, the, the, the most girls are in the Medical engineering. Medical, yeah, yeah, in medical engineering, but the, then the, they are a small group anyway. Yes, so yes, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, so so yeah, and it's it's like and and even like you know from those two girls, sometimes one of them is gonna drop out after the first semester <laughs> or after the second semester. So like there's always, yeah. So something is, and this is something that you should. I mean, there should be like a research, but done over a long period of time or to see how things somehow change or I don't know. Yeah, sorry. I, I think the, um, that is difficult to, for a high school student, girl student, uh, it's difficult to imagine herself doing, uh, becoming an engineer maybe because she, norm sometimes it happens that she doesn't know what an engineer does and mm -hmm. you think always, okay, it's, a male job and mm -hmm. you you quit it before thinking seriously about it mm -hmm. um maybe For it's example, just a matter of let them yeah. let them know what yeah. they, mm -hmm. they can do i don't for example in, in in england engineers for them for british people means plumbers <laughs> you know the people who repair uh, sinks and things like this these are engineers for them so i don't think First, that a girl wants to do this yeah that's the point um, so. and i have another comment for for you ambra uh, so i i visited just once padua and yep. uh, it was the the time when the master students has this celebration when they go out it was very funny. I don't know how. I think it's unique in in, in Europe. Only in, in Padua is this thing. So uh, they dress this... very uh, strange and they <laughs> shout and it's very noise. I don't yeah. know how, how. It's actually the graduation uh, ceremony, and yeah, um, yeah. I was uh, yes. It's so lovely and fun, and <laughs> it's something very traditional in Padua. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I have mine. Uh, here. <laughs> oh, okay. Mine, uh, yes. <laughs> so you, you graduate in Padova, even yeah. the, the master. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, related to what you were saying, yeah, um, I mean, first of all, like the, I'm sure that many schools don't have these career orientation centers. They should have them, but many schools don't have them. So a lot more should be done in that direction. Uh, it's I mean, just maybe... something, sorry, no, that I, 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 no, you go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I, it's just something that I came up with just now. I didn't thought about that before. And maybe it's something related to uh, getting to know what uh, can expect you if you um, sign up for something like for mm -hmm. engineering courses. 
and and it's not uh, something that you have in mind until uh, no one until uh, someone will do it. If we if girls now at the high school start to see female researcher, maybe uh, it's they they can become an example and. Maybe it's something that when people think about uh, engineering researchers, they not only think about male researchers. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, but here, like the teacher should play an important part as mm. in, you know, bring, bring women engineers to talk to the students, take students so. on high school students, yeah, on visits to, I don't know, companies to see yeah, exactly to see what the, uh, you know, an engineer yeah, yeah. does what a mechanical engineer can do. What again, the career orientation center should uh, should do much more uh, in that respect. But again, many schools don't have them anyway. Um, so um, so yeah, much more could be could be done, but yeah, it's not. I I decided at the at the very end of my high school. Uh, years and I've never thought about it before and once I said uh, okay maybe make maybe mechanical engineer is a good idea even though I didn't expect that uh, it was so full of uh, boys <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was yeah I decided uh, just because it was okay I can do it and I didn't expect this uh, so are you are you working at the moment or just uh, in full-time um, studying I, I am a PhD student in uh, Antonio mm -hmm. okay and are you also working or no just uh, just on um, uh, okay. yeah the PhD yes okay 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 because I was also curious about the experience of you know working in a in a company as a mechanical engineer or mm, no no not no, yet no. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. You will share it with us when you when you have it. <laughs> of course. Okay. Thank you so I'll much. Be glad. Anyone, Thanks to you. <laughs> anyone else who uh, who has any comments who would like to uh, offer their input? Uh, yes. Maybe I can say Please. something as a Please. representative from Serbia. So uh, there is this book uh, recently written. Uh, the her name is uh, Lamia Begovic. And uh, Mariana Verečko is there from Sarajevo in Bosnia, but uh, Bosnian and Serbian is very similar, and they want to put this book as a like obligatory uh, part of our high school cur curriculum, and his, it's talking about feminism. The main problems are that, uh, as uh, Amber mentioned, that uh, female researchers are not uh, mentioned and uh, in our cur curriculum as much as uh, male uh, scientists, uh, sportsmen, etc. Uh, also the, the unpaid housework that <laughs> uh, females do. And when women decide to have a child, they're most likely going to lose their job so in Serbia, uh, they receive like uh, support for this when they decide to uh, have children. And this is fairly new. This is uh, like uh, since five years ago. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it what I wanted to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Alexander. Um, so from this point of view, I mean, here in Romania, um, we have like women have two years of paid maternity leave. They pay you, yes. I think, seven. I think it's the biggest in Europe. Seventy-five percent of the, the salary, something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. They, you know, you get almost uh, your full salary. So for two years, um, I'm not sure about about companies, but the companies they also have to give it, it like private companies, right? Yes. Um, but the problem, the problem with private companies is that uh, for sure they will find somebody to replace you for those two years. And then sorry, and this is also sorry, I just want yeah. to tell you something that um, sure. when you take your leave, 
your mother leave. Uh, the companies are not allowed to 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 fire you. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, when you came back, you came come back to work uh, after these two years. So um, they have to to keep you there for at least six months. So mm -hmm. they're not allowed to fire you. Yeah, exactly. But but I, what I was going to say is that, um, and this is something that it was also reported by um, women in the study that I participated in. Um, the fact that, and the, there are also other studies um, um, indicating this, um, women were complaining about the fact that they, after they came back, women from private companies, uh, after they came back to work, they did not receive any kind of support from their managers um, to, let's say, quickly get back in shape and take back their former um, 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 assignments and roles and um, and yeah, and there were also situations when, because they were, meanwhile, they were replaced by somebody else, um, they were somehow, so yeah, as you were saying, they are forced to keep you, they cannot, they cannot fire you anyway, but they can, um, I think they can assign you to like, somehow like a lower position or something like that. I'm not sure. Um... Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I also, that's why I'm, 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 um. I'm not sure how this works, if, but if this cannot be done legally, for sure it can be done in, in other ways because there were women who were complaining about this and the fact that, um, yeah, and then in the, end they, in the end they lost their job or in the end they decided to quit because it was no longer... I think it depends on the company because the big companies in Romania, they cannot do that because you mm -hmm. can... Uh, you can uh, in so the lawsuit, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the little ones, and in my own uh, experience, I uh -huh. I was almost fired one month bec before I uh, started my uh, before I gave birth, actually. Mm -hmm. So they almost fired me anyway. So yes, the little companies can do that to you, but the big ones, they they don't do that because mm -hmm. they're afraid of lawsuits. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but th what I was saying is that they can find ways to push you aside somehow anyway, you know. Yes, if, for sure, they, yes. Uh, yeah, um, if, uh, yeah, not in a legal way, they can, um, they can do it in other ways. And then f to give you another example, I was talking to somebody who has a company and they wanted to hire somebody and they were like, okay, we interviewed this lady but you know she just got married so probably soon she's gonna have a child so you know like we're gonna hire her then she's gonna go on a maternity leave what are we gonna do with her so they were like okay so it's better you know to hire a man so they were already without even you know asking her about all these plans and they were just assuming things that actually when i first had my started my first job a lot of years ago anyway the first at the interview the first thing that they asked me was okay so are you planning on getting married are you planning on having any children in the first uh, uh, first year and i was like no this was in romania interview in yes. Romania. Right? yes like i don't know 10 years ago so mm -hmm. maybe okay. 15 yeah but it happens i i'm sure that it happens even now so yeah yeah now i heard that it's illegal to ask this kind of questions but i'm sure in one way or another it's still happen so uh that yeah you are not even allowed to ask this kind of questions to somebody you interview which makes sense um but yeah for sure and if not they make assumptions anyway if, if they don't ask you in a direct way yes <laughs> yes thank you you're welcome i think it's uh time it, so it's time to yeah go. thank you roxana thank Wait. you roxana i think uh, people enjoyed your your uh, talk and uh, your uh, quiz uh, <laughs> your movie youtube movie so uh, we will close this uh, morning session to now and we will be back at uh, three o'clock central european time for the test for those that want the test then we have the discussion session and the closing ceremony so today we will close the the, the school so Enjoy your, your lunch and uh, see you later. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 And good luck with all your projects. Bye. and.